What's up bakers, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a sourdough chocolate brioche. We're gonna use a stiff panettone starter, bake them in the high mold, and put an amazing glaze on top. For this sourdough chocolate brioche, we're gonna use a stiff starter, otherwise known as a pasta madre. So I use this starter to make panettone. I also use it to make my sourdough brioche. What we're gonna try and do is feed this through a series of refreshments to bring the pH level to 4.1. It's very important to have the acid balance so that we can leaven our dough properly. The length of fermentation on this bread is so long that if we use a regular starter, it gets overly acidic and the final product doesn't rise, it doesn't get the oven spring, and most importantly, it doesn't taste very good. So let's get started with our first refreshment. All right, so to get started for our first refreshment, we're gonna need our pH pen, a scale, I've got some water at 28 degrees Celsius, and then I've got a strong flour. I'm using panettone flour from Molino Piscini, but you could just use a strong bread flour, it'll work the same. So the goal is to get this to 4.1, and through a series of refreshments, we're gonna change the pH. So we are right now at 3.9. This starter was last fed about 18 hours ago, 40% water, 100% starter, and 100% flour. And what that does is it allows it to really inoculate the dough so that when we go into our first refreshment, we have a really strong yeast culture that's gonna leaven and hopefully triple our starter in size. We're gonna start with 75 grams of stiff starter. Now what I'm doing is 50% inoculation for the first feed. We're gonna do 68 grams of water, and then we're gonna go 150 flour, and we're gonna throw this on the mixer with the paddle attachment. And I'm gonna mix this on second speed for about five minutes. I always like to save this until I'm done mixing, just in case I make a mistake. So we're just gonna leave that there for a moment. So this is now finished. You can see it's nice and extensible. I started at about 45% hydration and we can drop that down to about 40. Now you don't wanna go over 45, but it's a good start and it'll depend on how your starter has been handled before. I started with 68 grams of water as mentioned. So mine's a little softer, but when I'm doing this at home and rolling it at home, I push the hydro just a couple percentage because it's kind of hard to roll this out by hand. Uh, whereas if you're doing it in a commercial bakery, you can just use the sheeter and you can keep that hydration pretty low. And we're gonna fold it up like that to sort of an envelope and roll it out the reverse direction. You should notice the dough gets a little bit smoother. Then we're gonna roll this up like a snail. And we're gonna fold it over, use a square little X, place this inside of our container, and now put this into the proofer. It has been four hours and it's time to do our second refreshment. Now, before we mix our dough, I'm gonna take the pH really quick just to make sure we're on point. And we should be somewhere between 4.05 and 4.2. If you're a little bit under, don't worry about it because you still have two more refreshments and you'll balance out. But you wanna be at least... So we're gonna start with our dough. So I have 300 grams. I'm gonna add my flour, which will be equal weight. And then I'm gonna do my water. So we're gonna aim for 40% and 40% of 300 is 120. We're gonna pop this on the mixer now. If you have a spiral mixer, you can definitely make this in the spiral. Our stiff starter is well mixed and we're gonna laminate it. Now, I need to save some of this to keep my starter alive and going and I need some for my mix. So I'm gonna save about 500 grams for the mix. And while I work with my first dough, I'm just gonna keep it covered. And we're gonna roll this out. So we're gonna roll it out in a lamination style. And this is gonna be held at 18 degrees Celsius until tomorrow when I do my next refreshment. And I'm gonna put this in the container and set this aside. Now I keep this in my office, because at this time of year it's 18 degrees Celsius. 
and it's kind of perfect. Now our second chunk here, it gets a little bit harder to roll out the bigger piece. So you have to just use a bit of force. Okay, you can see every time you fold this over, it gets a little bit smoother and it's really buttery smooth right now. Last one, and then we're gonna put this in the proofer for three and a half hours. Okay, so we've got this rolled out. I'm now going to roll this up. We're gonna get lots of oxygen into our dough and we are going to be ready to bake. Now for today's video, I'm only gonna do two refreshments before I mix the final dough. If you're just starting out and you're new to using a stiff starter, I recommend doing three total refreshments just to make sure that your starter is on point. We're gonna score the top and then I'm gonna place this into a suiting container. Now, I've tried containers that it rises straight up in and out, and I honestly haven't noticed any difference. So I'm just gonna place it right in here. We're gonna put this in the proofer. I'm out of breath from rolling that out. And we're gonna wait for three and a half hours. While we wait for our pasta madre, we're gonna dissolve the sugar with our honey. So I'm just gonna put the honey on top of the sugar. And we're gonna throw in a vanilla bean for extra flavor. Now I'm using a really, really nice vanilla bean and it has a lot of flavor in the pod. So I'm gonna add the whole thing and then later I'll pull out the pod and just leave the dissolved seeds. This is like so aromatic. It just adds such a nice little underlying flavor note to our brioche. And next we're gonna add our boiling water. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a whisk and I'm just gonna whisk the ingredients together so that I can dissolve all the sugar. Now the reason I do this now is because we want this to be fully dissolved by the time we go to mix our brioche and we want it to be room temperature. So if you forget and you wait, you have to find a way to quickly chill the water or it's gonna throw off your final dough temperature. We got about three hours to mix our final dough, so I'll see you in a little bit. It's been three and a half hours and it's time to mix our brioche dough. So the first thing we wanna do is check our ingredients. I've got cold egg yolks, cold flour, our honey, sugar, and vanilla mixture, salt, room temperature butter, milk, and cocoa powder. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna combine the milk with the cocoa powder. And the milk is helpful because the cocoa powder will actually dry out the dough. You also wanna make sure, very important, that you're using Dutch processed cocoa powder because regular cocoa powder is acidic and it's going to ruin your fermentation. Dutch cocoa powder is awesome and it will work just great for this. So you're gonna mix this up really well. Make sure there's no lumps. How's that, is that okay? Good. Okay, good. The next thing we wanna do is we're gonna take the pH of our starter. So you can see here, it has risen significantly and has tripled in size. Does it look triple in size? Good, okay. And we're aiming for 4.1 in pH. The cocoa powder smells nice. You like the smell? Yeah. What's the smell like? Chocolate. Chocolate. So we need 497, which is about what I've got here. I'm just gonna take off the sort of dried corners and we're gonna just use the inside. So we're gonna start by throwing this in the mixer. Do you wanna throw that in the mixer? The whole thing. Put the flour. And we're gonna put our water. I'm gonna just scrape all the vanilla bean out of here. And we're gonna mix this for about 15 minutes. You can see the dough is picking itself off the bottom of the mixer here. It's got like really strong, it tugs back when I pull on it, but we still got two more minutes. So let's let it go and we'll check in in a few minutes. There's our timer. You can see I have a very strong dough here. It's wrapped itself around the mixer. It's got really good tug to it and it feels, it feels great. We're now gonna add our eggs in two or three steps. So we're gonna add sort of a third, a third, a third. If you have a really large capacity in the mixer, it might take you four or even five steps. If you're mixing a smaller amount of dough, they mix in pretty quick. Do you wanna help me with the eggs? 
so take your temperature of your dough before you add your egg yolks, and then keep in mind we're using cold egg yolks, so the temp's gonna come down. So you'll probably climb to about 28 Celsius, add your egg yolks, it's gonna kinda come down, 23, 22, and slowly climb back up, add more egg, and, and repeat. Before we add our next egg yolk, we just wanna make sure the first bit of egg yolk is fully incorporated, then we'll add it. Okay, next egg yolk. Next. Yep, add half of that please. Don't put it all. You got it? Now with our third egg yolk addition, we're also gonna add our milk and cocoa powder mixture. I wonder what it's going to look like when it mixed up with that. What do you think it's gonna look like? I don't know. Okay, last egg yolk. Last egg. Our cocoa powder egg mixture is almost all incorporated. Then we'll add the salt next. And the salt's gonna take about two minutes to mix in. So we've done 15 minutes. The water, sugar, honey, vanilla with the starter and flour. Another 15 minutes for the egg yolks. And then we'll be about two minutes for the salt and another 10 for the butter. You can see and tell when it's really well mixed because the dough will start to climb up the dough hook. Now you can see at the back of the mixer, the dough is kind of stuck to that hook. That's a good sign. Next, we're gonna add our salt. We're just gonna sprinkle that around evenly. I'm gonna put a little bit of the butter on my hands just to remove this dough from the mixer, from the hook, sorry. And we're gonna let that go. Sorry, what is it doing? It's frozen. The dough is doing what? Frozen. It's frozen. Apparently the dough is farting. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? Okay, what does that mean? Does it mean it's a strong dough? Yeah. We're gonna add the butter in three to four steps. So I'm gonna take a quarter of the butter. Once the first chunk of butter is fully mixed, add the next and then the next and the next. So don't forget to scrape down the mixer from time to time. I'll mix. All right, so our dough is done mixing. We're gonna open it up and take a look at the dough. So I wanna show you what this dough looks like. It's pretty magical. Um, it's really very silky smooth. It's got this crazy shine to it. I mean, it looks awesome. It looks just beautiful. So we're gonna let this sit in the mixer now for about 20 minutes. It's full of bubbles. It just looks awesome. We'll let it rest. I'm gonna set the table up and then I'll show you how to shape the dough and get it into the molds. Our dough's been resting in the mixer for about 20 minutes and we're gonna take it out and shape it. Now I'm gonna put them into 500 gram molds, but we're gonna put 350 grams per mold. Uh, you can buy these online. They are from Novacart. Uh, check your local pastry distributor. Uh, I know Pastry Chef Boutique carries them and I'll try to leave a few links for places you can get them in the description below. So I'm gonna take the dough out. We're gonna place it on the table here and then we're gonna to start to shape it. But first I'm gonna take a little bit of butter and I'm just gonna grease the table so that it helps with the shaping and it prevents the dough from sticking to the table. There's already a lot of fat in the dough, so I don't wanna use water. I'm gonna just use fat for it. Now this dough looks absolutely beautiful. It's full of bubbles and it's, it's just so silky smooth. We are going for 350 gram pieces here, so I'm gonna cut them and place them on the scale, but I'm not gonna round them off just yet because I wanna make sure that I have the right allocation of dough. You always lose a little bit in the mixer, so I just wanna make sure I've got the right amount before I sort of shape them all. to uh, pre-shape these. So we can do this method where we kind of fold it over. Um, I like to just round this with the dough scraper, with the bench scraper, and pull it tight. So you should see lots of bubbles coming to the surface. And it should be very easy to handle. It doesn't stick to your hands. It looks very, very nice. Look at that. What a beautiful looking dough. The 
next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our first one. We're gonna give it a sort of final round and then we're gonna place it inside the panettone mold. Now, I like to make sure that it's circled and when I put it into the mold, I try to just grease my hands a little bit, go underneath and place it in so that I don't tear away when I pull it out. So you can see what that looks like inside the mold there. It does not look like a lot of dough in these molds here, but the oven spring on this recipe is just crazy. So don't be concerned if it's not filling the bottom of the mold. And now it's also, remember, going to rise for 16 to 20 hours. So it's going to really gain some volume or sort of, I would say, just over double in size. And then when we bake it, it's gonna double in size again. We will glaze it and bake it. So. I try to make sure that they're right in the center. And then I also try to make sure that they're round. I find if they're not round, they kind of rise and the end product looks a bit funny. It still tastes great, but it's better to have that nice aesthetic. Okay, I'm gonna get these in the proofer at 28 degrees Celsius. We're gonna check them tomorrow. We're gonna look at the rise. We're also gonna make a quick glaze for them that we'll put on tomorrow. So I'll see you in the morning. All right, what's up? It has been a long wait for our chocolate brioche, but it's finally time to bake it. Now, I said before that it would be about 16 to 20 hours. I'm actually pushing about 24 hours now, and I'm pretty sure it's because I only did two refreshments on my starter. Normally, I do three, but regardless, let's get them glazed and put them in the oven. So we're gonna take them out of our proofer. They've risen really well, and place them on our tray. They look great. Really awesome. I think these are gonna be winners. Now we're gonna glaze these with an almond glaze. This is made up of egg whites, sugar, and almond flour. It's really easy to make. I just use the stick blender and blend all the ingredients together. I'll leave a recipe down below in the comments. So we're just gonna pipe this glaze out. We don't wanna put too much of this on here because it'll actually cause them to sink. So we're just gonna put a light amount. If it splits a bit in the baking, that's totally fine. I actually kind of like the way it looks when it splits. Next, we're gonna put some pearl sugar, and I put a good amount on here. Uh, if you wanted to put sliced or slivered almonds or even whole almonds, you could put them at this point or any other sort of nuts that you want. And we're gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna bake these at 325 degrees. Our brioche hung overnight. I just took them off the molds, they're on the plate, and they look amazing. Woo! Look at that, that looks amazing. What? What a beautiful looking crumb structure. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me bake next. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.